yang ini akan saya mulai dan beberapa partisipan juga akan join di live YouTube juga dokter sambil menunggu partisipan yang cukup acara ini akan dimulai satu menit lagi Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as we are about to begin, I would like to ask for your cooperation in completing this class today. Please make sure your microphone on Zoom is turned off to avoid interference. Okay, thank you for your keen cooperation attention and welcome to our special lecturer today, Dr. Nora Zela Zainal Abidin, as a lecturer from Faculty of Applied and Human Science in a University of East Malaysia. And I hope this lecture can provide useful and significant experience in our education, especially in developing the quality of students as inter-university. Thank you for all being here with us today. Also, thank you for all the participants for attending this online class. We hope you will learn a lot today. We hope prepare for your useful and interesting. And then, further for this morning, Arginda Swayakspair, we will be opened by a special lecturer today. And after that, we will enter the Q&A session and this session will be ends. Yeah. Uh, I will start for this class today, yeah. So, Dr. Noz, not yeah, the time is yours. Thank you. Assalamu Thank you, Miss Nobita. Yeah. Before I start, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Norazila Zaino Abidin. I'm currently work as a lecturer at Faculty of Applied and Human Sciences, University of Malaysia, Police. So before I start, I will share uh, my presentation. Can you see uh, my slide? Okay, so today uh, I want to talk about uh, poverty and education. Okay. Okay, all right, poverty. What is poverty? Poverty, uh, poverty, uh, yeah, itu kemiskinan. Okay, uh, so uh, I will conduct my presentation uh, in this. Maybe I will use uh, English and Malay. Okay. So uh, why is poverty? Okay, poverty is about uh, not having enough money uh, to meet basic needs. Okay, the basic need we have a uh, food, uh, clothing, and shelter. So, uh, it is a basic need. Okay, ataupun uh, dipanggil sebagai uh, keperluan asas. Okay, dalam uh, jadi kemiskinan ini bukan hanya uh, dikatakan uh, disebabkan oleh uh, kekurangan pendapatan, tetapi ianya juga disebabkan oleh kekurangan wang untuk memenuhi keperluan asas. Jadi keperluan asas ini kita ada uh, makanan, pakaian dan juga tempat tinggal. So ini adalah uh, tiga benda yang penting untuk kita meneruskan gitu, atau menjalani uh, kehidupan. Okay. So this is the uh, poverty. Okay. So it means that uh, poverty is not uh, 
having enough to feed and clothe a family. And then not having a school or clinic to go to. Okay, so this is about the poverty. So the example of poverty, uh, like uh, poor health, okay, low level of education or skill, and in authority or unwillingness to work, okay, high rate. Uh, so this is the example of uh, poverty. Okay, so we know that uh, poverty is one of the worst problems that the world uh, faces today. Okay. So uh, based on the World Bank Organization, okay, uh, describe poverty is hunger. Okay, jadi uh, berdasarkan kepada World Bank ni, uh, mendeskripsikan bahawa uh, kemiskinan ini boleh menyebabkan uh, berlakunya uh, kelaparan. Okay, uh, poverty is hunger. So the characteristic of poverty, uh, you can see that most of them are living in rural areas. Okay, kebanyakan mereka yang miskin uh, tinggal di kawasan uh, rural okay, uh, compared to the urban areas. Okay, the family size are bigger. Okay, kebanyakan mereka yang miskin ni uh, mempunyai jumlah uh, keluarga ataupun children yang ramai. Okay, and then uh, the main source of income is uh, agriculture sector. Uh, dia banyak bergantung kepada uh, sektor pertanian, okay, dia punya pendapatan. Then okay, lack of resources, uh, low quality uh, of human resource, uh, low income, and uh, most of income is used for uh, basic needs. Okay? And tend to have a food insecurity. So this is the characteristic of poverty. So this is the picture uh, based on the uh, poverty because lack of food, okay, kekurangan makanan. Okay, uh, bila uh, dia miskin, okay, atau poverty, dia adalah lack of food. Okay, and ada uh, kekurangan makanan yang uh, sehat. Okay, and then uh, shelter dari segi tempat tinggal, kekurangan uh, tempat tinggal yang baik. And then uh, clothing, okay, pakaian. Uh, so kalau kita tengok pakaian dia juga adalah uh, yang busuk ataupun yang dah koyak. Okay, so this is the, uh, the basic needs. Okay, bila dia tidak dapat memenuhi uh, uh, the basic needs, keperluan asas dalam menjalani kehidupan seperti uh, makanan, pakaian dan tempat tinggal, dia boleh diklasifikasikan sebagai miskin. Kali dia tidak mempunyai uh, Uang yang cukup, duit yang cukup. Okay. <coughs> so most people in the world uh, live in poverty. Uh, we can see based on the data, eighty-five uh, percent of the world live on less than thirty uh, dollar per day. And two third live on less than ten dollar uh, per day. Okay, so every ten uh, person live on less than one dollar and ninety uh, per day. Okay, so this is the below the poverty line. So uh, the poorest in the world are often hungry. We can see uh, kebanyakan negara-negara miskin uh, biasanya dia mengalami kelaparan okay? uh, and have much less access uh, to education and regularly have no light uh, to, uh, to at night and suffer from much uh, of health. Okay? Uh, dia tidak mempunyai uh, kesihatan yang baik uh, dan dia tidak mempunyai Uh, pendidikan. Jadi bila dia miskin, dia tidak dapat memenuhi kesemuanya. Okay, according to the world, uh, the most recent uh, estimate, 
uh, in 2015, okay, uh, they have uh, 734 million people live on less than uh, $1 and uh, per uh, a day. Okay. And then the Southern Asia uh, and sub saharan Africa uh, are expected to see the largest uh, increases in extreme of poverty. Jadi kebanyakan uh, di negara Southern Asia and uh, sub saharan Africa adalah mereka yang menunjukkan negara yang menunjukkan peningkatan ataupun uh, negara yang paling tinggi dari segi uh, miskin tegar ataupun uh, extreme poverty. Okay. So, uh, kalau kita tengok di Southern Asia adalah sebanyak uh, 32 million and uh, di Sub-Sahara Afrika terdapat sebanyak uh, 26 million okay. yang uh, yang tinggal living below the uh, international poverty line. Okay. So, uh, one out uh, of five children live in uh, extreme poverty and the negative impact uh, of poverty and situation in the early years have a uh, ramification that can last a lifetime. So this one, according to myself, okay, Around uh, 22,000 uh, children die each day due to poverty. Okay, uh, so kita tengok bahawa uh, berdasarkan data statistik yang dikeluarkan oleh UNICEF, terdapat seramai 22,000 uh, kanak-kanak yang meninggal uh, setiap hari disebabkan oleh uh, kemiskinan. Okay. Kemiskinan. Under, uh, disebabkan oleh kemiskinan, disebabkan oleh uh, kelaparan uh, and then disebabkan oleh kekurangan sanitation and uh, access okay? uh, mendapatkan uh, air yang bersih jadi juga disebabkan oleh uh, sumber yang uh, terhad ataupun kekurangan sumber juga boleh menyebabkan uh, mereka tidak dapat meneruskan kehidupan okay? Ini akan menyebabkan memberi kesan kepada kesihatan. Bila dia minum air yang tidak bersih, indirectly akan akan dia tak. Okay. Around 1 billion uh, people welcome uh, the 21st uh, century not knowing how to read and write. Okay. Uh, so 1 billion people. So it is the sangat tinggilah jumlah dia di mana uh, bahawa terdapat mereka yang tidak dapat membaca dan juga menulis. The infectious uh, diseases continue to cause the death of the poor people uh, around the world. Okay. Uh, yang ini disebabkan oleh uh, dahia causes the death of 1.8 million children each year. And around 1.1 billion people uh, in developing countries don't have access to water and 2.6 billion live in poor condition, lacking basic sanitation. Okay. Uh, jadi mereka ni, uh, di mana negara-negara membangun ni terdapat sebanyak 1.1 billion okay, yang tidak dapat uh, access kepada air yang bersih dan juga mereka tinggal di tempat yang uh, yang sederhana ataupun uh, tempat yang kurang uh, bersih. Okay. And 1.6 billion people live without electricity. Uh, jadi mereka juga tinggal uh, di tempat yang tiada uh, elektrik. Okay. Uh, jadi mereka tinggal dalam keadaan gelap ketika waktu uh, malam. So the, the is the concept of poverty. Okay, you can see uh, the poverty. Okay. So we have the, uh, the lack uh, due to the poverty, lack of education. Okay, uh, disebabkan oleh uh, poverty juga akan menyebabkan uh, pelbagai jenis penyakit disease. Okay, and then uh, 
dia juga boleh disebabkan oleh poverty juga boleh menyebabkan fewer job opportunity dan job due to the job opportunity juga boleh menyebabkan poverty and poverty juga boleh menyebabkan berlakunya hunger bila dia miskin dia tak dapat akses kepada makanan yang mencukupi dia boleh menyebabkan kelaparan bila dia kelaparan dia tidak dapat bekerja So this one, can uh, see dia tidak dapat bekerja. Dan disebabkan uh, dia tidak dapat bekerja, jadi dia tak ada pendapatan. Bila dia tidak bekerja, dia tiada uh, income. So dia akan menyebabkan belakangnya poverty. Dan disebabkan poverty juga dia tidak boleh uh, bekerja. Bila di sini kita tengok bahawa uh, lack of education can affect the uh, people cannot work. Jadi uh, bila dia tiada pendidikan yang baik, jadi dia juga tidak dapat uh, masuk bekerja dalam sektor-sektor yang penting. Uh, jadi menyebabkan dia tiada pendidikan dan menyebabkan belakangnya poverty. And then disease juga, um, contohnya dia sakit, okay? so dia tidak dapat untuk bekerja. So, where is extreme poverty? Okay, so we can see Sub-Sahara Africa is the region with the largest number of people living in extreme poverty. Okay, kalau kita tengok bahawa di Sub-Sahara Africa adalah uh, antara negara uh, yang mempunyai uh, jumlah uh, mereka yang tinggal dalam keadaan uh, miskin tegak. Okay, uh, so di negara Sub-Sahara sub Sahara Afrika. So, uh, there are 413.3 million okay, mereka, uh, people in sub Sahara Afrika live in extreme uh, poverty. Okay, for example, uh, the, the example of the country in sub Sahara Afrika like Angola, uh, Benin, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Cameroon. Uh, so, this is the example for the, uh, the countries in sub Sahara uh, Afrika. Okay. So, jadi ramai mereka yang miskin tegak uh, hingga di Sub-Sahara Afrika. Okay. And then followed by the uh, South Asia, okay, uh, 2.216.4 uh, million people in South uh, Asia live in Asia uh, poverty. Okay, so the example is uh, country like uh, Pakistan, okay, uh, India, uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan. Uh, so example for uh, South Asia country and then followed by the East Asia and Pacific we have uh, they have uh, 47.2 million people and then 25.9 million in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, 18.6 million people live uh, in the Middle East and North Africa and 7.1 million uh, in Europe and Central Asia. Okay. So uh, this one is the poverty rate in Malaysia in 2020 by state. So Malaysia is divided in, uh, to several states. We have Sabah, uh, Kelantan, Sarawak, Kedah, Terengganu. Okay. So uh, based on this figure, you can see that Sabah, uh, in 2020, uh, the East uh, Malaysian uh, state of uh, Sabah has the higher rate of poverty in Malaysia. Okay. Di Malaysia adalah uh, uh, Sabah adalah paling tinggi yang menunjukkan mereka yang miskin. Okay. And then in 2019, Malaysia revised national uh, poverty line income uh, it from Mighty measuring rate to 2,208. Okay, so Malaysia, uh, Sabah is one of Malaysia most rural. Okay, and we are in the country Sabah, banyak ya uh, rural and least developed uh, state. Okay. 
So this one is the example uh, share of people living uh, below the poverty line in Indonesia from 2012 to 2021. So you can see uh, based on the figure, okay, uh, the figure is a uh, late creation, okay, and up. Some is meningkat, ada tahun yang meningkat, ada tahun yang berkurangan. Okay, so this one, uh, in 2021, okay, about 10.18% uh, uh, of the Indonesian population live below the poverty line. Okay. Kalau kita tengok untuk 2021, okay. so this one, this one, uh, 10.18%. Jadi dia meningkat sedikit daripada uh, tahun uh, 2020 dia punya poverty uh, line. Okay, so this one, uh, can see the country. Okay, so this one is the extreme poverty. You can see in 1996, China is the highest country. Uh, there are number of people living. Okay. Kemudian, 2004, uh, India, negara India, dapat ramai. Mereka yang tinggal dalam keadaan extreme poverty. Okay. This one uh, is the share of population in extreme poverty from 1981 to 2019. Okay, this one is the ASEAN, like uh, we have Laos, Laos Philippines, uh, we have Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, okay, uh, Myanmar, Thailand, and Malaysia. Okay, there are beberapa saja uh, negara ASEAN di sini. So, kita boleh tengok uh, dia punya share of population in extreme poverty okay. in 2019. Okay, 2019, uh, negara yang paling tinggi adalah negara Laos. Laos paling tinggi, uh, mereka yang tinggal Boleh dengar ke? Okay, so uh, Laos. Okay, Laos. Uh, pada tahun 2019 adalah uh, negara yang paling tinggi yang mempunyai uh, mereka yang uh, dalam keadaan miskin. Followed by Philippines. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Indonesia. Okay. Uh, Vietnam. Okay, and Myanmar, Thailand, and the last one is Malaysia. Okay, so this one is 2019. So, uh, there are uh, at least uh, nine dimension of poverty uh, need to be considered uh, based on Sugiyanto and Rusantra in 2006. Uh, the first one is about inability to meet the basic needs. Okay, the basic needs like food, uh, clothes, and shelter. The second one is the low accessibility to other basic needs uh, like uh, health, education, sanitation, clean water, and transportation. Okay, and then uh, inability uh, to do capital accumulation. Okay, vulnerable to external disturbances, 
the quality of human resource, uh, absent in society, activity, uh, lack of access to job opportunity and inability to run a business and social activity. So the is the nine dimension of quality need to be considered. Okay. So this one is the causes of global poverty. Uh, antara penyebab kepada uh, berlakunya uh, poverty. Uh, the first one, kita tengok bahawa inadequate access to clean water and nutrition food. Jadi, dia tidak mendapat akses uh, kepada uh, air yang bersih dan juga uh, makanan yang sihat. Lah. Okay. Ini yang menyebabkan berlakunya uh, poverty. Okay. Currently, uh, more than uh, 2 billion people uh, don't have access to clean water at home and why over 800 million suffer from hunger. Jadi, bila mereka tidak dapat akses kepada air yang bersih, jadi uh, menyebabkan mereka uh, dikategorikan sebagai uh, boleh menyebabkan. Okay, uh, and then you might think that poverty causes hunger and prevent people uh, from accessing clean water. Okay, but hunger and water uh, insecurity are also big reason why people uh, struggle to escape extreme uh, poverty. Okay. And then uh, little or no access to livelihood or job. Okay, so without a job or a way to make money, so people uh, will face poverty. Okay, uh, bila dia tak ada kerja, jadi dia tak akan ada pendapatan. Bila dia tidak bekerja, dia tidak ada pendapatan, jadi dia tidak dapat memenuhi keperluan asas dia iaitu uh, untuk membeli makanan, tempat tinggal dan juga uh, pakaian. Okay, ini menyebabkan uh, lakunya poverty. Okay. And then uh, conflict. Okay, conflict. Conflict can cause uh, poverty in several ways. Okay, uh, so you can see the large scale uh, protected violence that we uh, see in space like Syria can create society to a heart, destroy uh, infrastructure and cause people to flee, uh, forcing family to sell or uh, leave behind all the assets. Okay? So conflict juga uh, menyebabkan uh, berlakunya poverty. Bila conflict antara sesebuah negara berlaku, dia dapat uh, merosakkan infrastructure, menyebabkan berlakunya violence. Okay? Uh, jadi, dia boleh menyebabkan berlakunya uh, poverty. And then uh, poor education. Okay, so uh, not every uh, person without an education is living in extreme uh, poverty. But most of them, okay, most of the extreme poor uh, don't have an education. Okay, uh, jadi tak semestinya kalau dia tidak ada uh, pendidikan dia uh, akan menjadi uh, miskin tegar. Tetapi kebanyakan miskin tegar ataupun extreme poor uh, tidak mempunyai pendidikan. Okay. Uh, kerana apa dia tidak mempunyai uh, pendidikan? Uh, there is a lot of barrier uh, stopping children for, from go, uh, going to school. Okay. Mungkin family dia uh, tidak mencukupi ataupun dia tiada Uh, sumber yang cukup untuk uh, membiayai uh, pendidikan anak-anak dia. Okay, uh, menyebabkan dia tidak hantar anak dia uh, ke sekolah. Okay, dan maybe dia perlukan anak dia untuk uh, membantu uh, mereka untuk bekerja. Okay. And then uh, climate change. Okay, uh, climate even like growth, uh, flooding and several storms. Okay, dah juga akan menyebabkan berlakunya, akan menyebabkan kepada poverty. Kalau kita tengok uh, contohnya banjir ataupun perubahan cuaca yang boleh uh, memberkesan kepada tanaman. Kan? Uh, jadi banjir juga dapat menyebabkan uh, kepada poverty. And then lack of user. Okay. Uh, people uh, Living in poverty don't have the means to weather the storm of life. So when there is a growth or conflict or illness, so there is 
ditemani tip or essay on hand to help. So this one can uh, apply to the uh, problem. And then the impact of poverty on health. Okay, so this one adalah kita nak tengok apakah kesan uh, uh, kemiskinan terhadap kesihatan. Okay, the first one, uh, kita tengok bahawa apabila uh, mereka miskin, dia tidak akan dapat uh, kesihatan yang baik. Okay, uh, jadi mungkin dari segi uh, life expectancy dia juga akan berkurang. Jadi higher infant mortality rate higher degree, okay. jadi ini dapat memberi kesan kepada uh, dia punya uh, kesihatan dan juga mungkin boleh menyebabkan uh, berlakunya dari segi uh, mental stress okay. uh, disebabkan mereka hidup dalam keadaan yang miskin dapat memberi kesan kepada mereka stress bila mereka stress uh, untuk menjalani kehidupan uh, jadi secara tak langsung akan menyebabkan memberi kesan kepada kesihatan ataupun uh, akan adanya uh, bila mereka tidak dapat makanan yang sihat jadi uh, nutrition yang cukup jadi dia boleh menyebabkan pelbagai jenis uh, penyakit okay. and then uh, kepada society <coughs> okay, kepada society mungkin kita tengok dari segi education okay. uh, bila uh, bila dia Mungkin dia tidak dapat hantar anak-anak ke sekolah Jadi dia dapat memberi kesan kepada education uh, Kemudian juga kita boleh tengok bahawa uh, The impact of poverty on society in term of uh, Bila dia tak bekerja Jadi akan uh, adanya banyak uh, crime okay? Atau jenayah mencuri, merompak Kerana kesempitan hidup Menyebabkan dia orang terpaksa untuk uh, melakukan Uh, okay. Maksudkan jenayah merompak, mencuri dan sebagainya Untuk menyelesaikan uh, kehidupan okay. So this one, the impact of poverty on society And then uh, in, uh, the impact of poverty to economy okay. So bila ni kebanyakan kita tengok in term of unemployment Ataupun pengangguran okay. uh, Jadi mereka biasanya tidak mahu bekerja ataupun tidak mendapat pekerjaan yang baik dan menyebabkan mereka menganggur. Jadi secara tak langsung akan memberikan kepada ekonomi bagi sesebuah uh, negara. Okay. And the last one, the impact of poverty on uh, environment. Okay, so why uh, people living in poverty may uh, mean a minus role impact on the global environmental problem. Uh, such as uh, climate change, so they can have a devastating impact on their local environment. Okay, uh, maybe the soil may be eroded in an empty to increase crop yield. Okay, fish stop. Uh, so this one, maybe bila dia miskin dia akan access kepada tanaman dan juga kalau kita tengok timber and firework okay, uh, yang parah di, di forest untuk dijadikan tempat tinggal mereka uh, jadi saya tak langsung memberi kesan kepada environment dan juga uh, hidupan di uh, hutan okay. So this is the, what are the solutions we propose uh, uh, to solve the problem uh, of poverty around uh, the world. Okay, so this one, uh, bring education uh, to the extreme world, okay, uh, to enable them to have better job, okay, bagi mereka pekerjaan ataupun bagi mereka pendidikan, okay, and then give them help how to improve their physical condition and make them more competitive, all right? And then government should invest in program and project that will be beneficial to improving the needs of the world and give people living without electricity access to renewable uh, energy and more school, better sanitation, uh, cleaner environment and more income opportunities. 
ini adalah antara uh, solution untuk kita mengatasi masalah kemiskinan. Okay. And then uh, we also uh, tackle the poverty, uh, provide universal access to modern family planning and quality education. Uh, we know that um, mereka yang miskin kadang uh, mempunyai jumlah belangan ahli keluarga yang ramai. So kita akan memberi dia uh, akses kepada macam mana nak uh, untuk uh, merancang uh, family itu uh, dengan kemampuan yang ada. Okay, empower women. Jadi uh, kita nak juga Uh, golongan wanita juga mampu uh, mendapat uh, akses yang sama seperti orang uh, laki. Okay. And then from a choice to have smaller uh, family. Okay. okay, why are children not in school? Okay, a uh, one major reason is violence. Okay, in the world ongoing conflict area, okay, including Syria, uh, like Yemen, Sudan, and Nigeria. So half of all uh, on, out of school children live in conflict affected country. That's why mereka tidak pergi ke sekolah kerana mereka tiba di kawasan ataupun di tempat yang berlaku ni konflik. Uh, uh, konflik. Okay. Uh, jadi menyebabkan mereka tidak dapat pergi ke sekolah. Uh, in the world season, uh, poverty requires children to work. Okay, uh, uh, dan yang kedua ni mungkin disebabkan oleh uh, mereka yang miskin memerlukan uh, kanak-kanak ni untuk bekerja. That's why mereka tidak dapat uh, pergi ke sekolah kerana ingin membantu uh, keluarga mereka. Uh, based on the figure, you can see that uh, there are uh, 787 million children of primary school age, uh, uh, 8% do not go to school. Satu jumlah yang sangat tinggi lah, di mana 8% daripada, uh, iaitu 787 million kanak-kanak uh, yang mendapat pendidikan awal ataupun primary school uh, tidak berkata. Okay. So during the pandemic, this number increased temporary, but in the pre-pandemic uh, level. Okay. So kita tahu bahawa uh, during the pandemic, uh, COVID-19, jadi uh, berlakunya uh, penutupan sekolah dan juga, okay, jadi dia dapat meningkatkan lagi belangan mereka yang tidak ke sekolah. Okay. And then, uh, 58 million children are of uh, primary school, means uh, who don't uh, even have the chance to learn how to write and uh, read. Okay. So uh, this one, uh, the meaning of education, so we know that Education is the process of facilitating uh, learning or the uh, education of knowledge, skill, value, belief, and habit. So this is the meaning of education. So there are three types of education. So we have the formal education, uh, informal uh, education, non-formal education. Okay, the formal education is the type uh, that is properly conducted in a classroom setting in an academic institution. Okay. So this is where students are tough skills to so have reading and writing as well as more uh, advanced economic lessons. So this is called as a, a formal education. Okay. Uh, or pendidikan yang uh, formal. Okay. Dia pergi ke sekolah yang telah disediakan. So this is the formal education. So informal education, on the other hand, is the type that is done outside the premise 
of an academic and institution. Okay, so often it's when a person learns he or acquire knowledge from home, uh, when visiting library or browsing educational uh, website through a device. Uh, so this is the informal education. Kalau formal kita uh, ada di sebuah institusi uh, pendidikan seperti ke sekolah untuk mendapatkan tapi informal ni kita uh, dapat juga dia punya kita belajar juga tetapi dia tidaklah di uh, sesuatu uh, tempat mungkin di luar daripada tempat uh, institusi pendidikan jadi kita boleh juga dapat uh, pendidikan tu ataupun dari segi kita juga website semua tu kita boleh dapat akses dan mempelajari and non-formal education have a quality similar to both formal and informal education. So uh, it follows a timetable and is systematically implemented, but not necessarily conducted within a school system. So this one is the non-formal education. So non-formal education is uh, there are three uh, there are three uh, three stages of education. So we have a primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. So uh, there are based on the statistics, there are uh, 250 million children were still out of school in 2018. Okay. And uh, 390 uh, million children were really on school more needed to do other sources for deadly uh, nutrition. So this one goes on the part and figure. Okay, uh, the proportion of children and your uh, primary and secondary school have a decline from uh, 26 percent in 2000 uh, to uh, 90 percent in 2010 and 70 percent in uh, 2018 and more than half of children uh, that have not enrolled in school leave in Sub-Sahara Africa okay? and 85% of children in Sub-Sahara Africa are not learning. Okay? Uh, mungkin keadaan uh, di tempat tersebut menyebabkan mereka tidak mendapat uh, pendidikan yang baik. Okay? Low and middle income country children with uh, disability and 90% less likely to achieve minimum proficiency in reading than those without disability. Okay. So this one is the uh, causes of lack of uh, education. Okay. Uh, penyebab kepada uh, berlakunya uh, ataupun kekurangan uh, pendidikan. The first one of course disebabkan oleh uh, property. So uh, for many children who still do not have access to uh, education, so it is notable because of persisting inequality and marginalization. Okay. So um, in developing and developed country like, uh, children do not have access uh, to basic education because of inequality uh, that originate in sex, heart and culture identity. Okay. Uh, mungkin uh, juga disebabkan oleh uh, pendidikan yang tidak uh, mereka tidak dapat uh, kekurangan pendidikan disebabkan oleh uh, poverty. Okay. And then the second one is the financial difficulty of developing country. Okay. Uh, the many uh, mentioned country do not appropriate their financial resources. Uh, necessary to treat school, provide uh, schooling material, uh, or recruit uh, and train teacher. Okay, uh, jadi yang menyebabkan uh, mereka tidak dapat pendidikan yang baik. Okay. Mungkin ada setengah negara yang tidak memperuntukkan uh, bajet untuk pembinaan sekolah ataupun provide uh, dengan keadaan yang selesa ataupun train uh, teacher yang baik. And most affected region, okay. So, uh, this one, Sub-Sahara Africa is the most affected uh, area uh, with over thirty-two million children of primary school age remaining uh, uneducated. Okay, the Sub-Sahara Africa. 
Jadi ada seramai 32 bilion kanak-kanak yang tidak dapat mengakses kepada pendidikan primary. Okay. Makanya mereka berada di negara yang terdepan. Okay. And inequality between girl and boy. So the education of girl. Okay. So today uh, is those who have uh, at least uh, uh, access to education. So they may have more than 54% uh, of non-school population in the world. Adanya perbezaan ataupun ketidakseimbangan antara lelaki dan perempuan untuk mencapai pendidikan. Okay, do you know uh, why in 2020 there are still 260 million children out of school? Okay, so the first one because of uh, child labor. Okay, uh, mungkin ada setengah keluarga yang mahukan anak-anak mereka untuk uh, bekerja. Uh, jadi, anak-anak uh, tersebut uh, tidak dapat meneruskan uh, ataupun mendapatkan pendidikan kerana perlu uh, bekerja. And then because of climate change, second, keadaan cuaca, okay. So this can impact children education in many ways. So the obvious one uh, is an increase in extreme weather, such as uh, flooding or typhoon, which leave a school damaged, destroyed, or being used as shelter. Uh, ini menyebabkan uh, mereka uh, tidak ke uh, sekolah. Because of climate change, and then uh, hunger, okay, uh, lack of daily uh, nutrition meal can mean uh, children dropping out of school or not be able to concentrate in the classroom. Okay, jadi bila mereka lapar, dia tak dapat nak fokus ataupun tidak dapat akses kepada makanan uh, yang sihat, jadi mereka tidak dapat memberi uh, concentrate in the classroom. Okay. Lack of teacher, okay. uh, too many teachers don't have the training or qualification needed to deliver a quality education. Okay, mungkin kalau kita tengok dekat sub-Saharan Afrika, okay, jadi dia masih kekurangan tenaga pengajar ataupun teacher yang berkualiti ataupun yang mempunyai qualification untuk mengajar. And then uh, pregnancy, okay, juga boleh menyebabkan kanak-kanak uh, itu tidak meneruskan uh, ataupun tidak ke sekolah. Okay, in many countries, uh, girls who are pregnant regardless of their circumstances can be excluded from school and not allowed uh, by even after they give birth. Okay, uh, bila kanak-kanak tu uh, mengandung ataupun lepas dia melahirkan pun dia tidak dibenarkan untuk kembali ke sekolah. Jadi, itu menjadi salah satu kenapa dia tidak mendapat pendidikan. And then, uh, violence, okay, uh, violence uh, like bullying and various form of discrimination can lead to student dropping out of uh, school. Okay, kalau kita tengok antara ini itu, dia ada uh, cause of discrimination, uh, perbezaan perbezaan dari segi uh, jantina lelaki perempuan ataupun perbezaan dari segi kulit uh, white and black okay uh, so it is the cause of uh, violence kenapa mereka ataupun kanak-kanak tidak ke sekolah So uh, why uh, is education so important in our life? Okay, the first, kenapa pentingnya uh, pendidikan uh, dalam kehidupan harian kita adalah uh, kerana securing a high income. Okay, bila kita mendapat pendidikan, uh, jadi kita pun akan uh, memperolehi pendapatan yang tinggi. Kiranya kita mempunyai pendidikan yang tinggi. Okay, they're securing her uh, high income and then they dapat meningkatkan produktiviti buruh. So, 
bila kita ada uh, pendidikan, dia dapat uh, berbanding dengan orang yang tiada pendidikan, jadi dia dapat meningkatkan kita punya produktiviti. Okay. And then improving the economy, so bila uh, pendidikan ni, lebih ramai orang yang ada pendidikan, dia secara tak langsung uh, improve the economy in the country. Okay. And then it help people become better citizen, Uh, get a better paid job, okay? Dia akan memperolehi uh, uh, upah uh, yang lebih baik kalau dia ada uh, pendidikan kompleks kepada mereka yang tiada pendidikan, okay? And then the most important is education can lift people out of poverty. Uh, so, berdasarkan daripada education, pendidikan uh, dapat uh, membantu uh, hidupan keluar daripada uh, kemiskinan. Okay? So, dia akan dapat uh, mencari kerja yang lebih baik untuk meningkatkan dia punya income. And then, uh, melalui pendidikan juga, dia penting dalam meningkatkan innovation and technology. And now, we have, we, kita menuju kepada industri revolusi yang uh, menggunakan uh, pelbagai teknologi uh, AI, okay, artificial intelligence, okay, uh, dalam semua jadi uh, dalam transaksi pun dah kita menggunakan teknologi. Uh, jadi ini semua adalah berbalik kepada pendidikan. Kalau dia tiada pendidikan, dia tidak dapat akses semua. Okay. Dia boleh menyumbang kepada uh, R&D, okay, research and development R&D. Okay dia juga uh, dapat hidup uh, better health okay. bila dia dah ada uh, pendidikan, dia tahu yang mana uh, ok untuk dia consume dari segi makanan yang mana bagus, yang mana tak bagus untuk dia punya kesihatan okay. and then have our school and people are uh, able to uh, shape a better society to be by knowing uh, and respectfully right, low and Uh, regulation. Okay, so this is the uh, the importance of education in our life. Okay? That's why uh, the Sustainable uh, Development Bureau uh, uh, or SDG. Yeah, sekarang ni kita uh, sering dengar berkaitan dengan SDG, uh, also known as uh, Global Goals, uh, set. 70 indicator and interrelated goals to end and poverty. Okay, so uh, poverty is one of the goal uh, United Nations to solve the uh, problem. Okay, uh, the first kita tengok bahawa uh, SDG ada memperkenalkan 17 goal yang ingin dicapaikan uh, oleh semua negara di dunia. Uh, salah satunya adalah no poverty. Okay, no poverty untuk mengatasi masalah property and also have uh, quality education. Kita nak mencapai kepada uh, pendidikan yang lebih berkualiti. So the goal for the poverty, no poverty is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere by 2030. So make sure uh, United Nations uh, nak memastikan bahawa pada tahun 2030 kita akan mencapai, kita akan menyebabkan masalah ataupun mengatasi masalah atau apa-apa. So, this one ya adalah antara target uh, to no poverty yang ini dicapai uh, oleh United Nations bagi semua negara. Okay. Uh, first is eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere. Okay. Uh, reduce at least by half the proportion of men, women, uh, and children of all ages living in poverty, okay, and then implement a nationally uh, appropriate social protection system, uh, and then to ensure that all men and women, in particular uh, the poor and the vulnerable, have equal right to economic resources, they build the re uh, resilience, of the poor and those in vulnerable situation and reduce their exposure and vulnerability to climate related uh, extreme event and other economy, social and environmental shock and disaster. Okay. 
and then ensure significant mobilization of resources from a variety of sources and create some policy framework at the national, regional, and international level. So this one is the target uh, from the United Nations to solve the poverty issue. Okay. And then we also have a goal number four is on quality education. Okay. So uh, the quality education to ensure inclusive uh, and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunity for all. Uh, so this one antara target yang ini dicapai untuk tahun 2030 yang telah diperkenalkan oleh United Nations. So yang pertamanya adalah dia memberi free primary and secondary uh, education. Jadi dia memberi uh, pendidikan uh, primary dan secondary secara uh, percuma kepada uh, semua. Okay. And then equal access to quality free primary uh, education and then equal access to affordable, technical, vocational, and higher education. Okay. And then increase the number of people with relevant uh, skill for financial success, eliminate all discrimination in education. Okay. Uh, so they not, they not mengatasi masalah diskriminasi yang terdapat di dalam pendidikan. Okay. Mengadi dari segi perbezaan uh, warna kulit, black and white, ataupun dari segi uh, jantina, lelaki, wanita. Okay. So, they not eliminate all discrimination. Okay, and then universal literacy and numeracy. Okay, uh, develop and uh, global citizen, we are uh, very inclusive and safe a uh, school okay uh, dah memastikan tempat uh, tinggal uh, sekolah tu adalah uh, selamat okay and expand, uh, expand higher education scholarship for developing country uh, jadi kerajaan juga perlu memberi bantuan dari segi uh, scholarship kepada mereka yang ini uh, menyambung pengajian mereka okay and then uh, increase the supply of qualified teacher uh, in developing uh, country. Okay. Uh, meningkatkan penawaran guru-guru uh, yang uh, berkelayakan uh, di negara uh, membangun. So I think uh, that's all uh, for this topic about the uh, poverty and education. So now I pass to Miss Novita. Okay, thank you for Dr. Noor. This material is very important and has always been a problem for every country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I will go to with the Q and A sessions. Yeah. Maybe for our audience, if you wanna ask question, you can raise in your hand or you can write in the group chat. Okay, first question, we have a student from Stockholm University. Yeah, Rajas Ferry. Yeah, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Nafita. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. My name is... Okay, am I audible? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. My name is Rajas Ferry from Information System Department. I would like to ask you a question. Uh -huh. In the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned about agriculture. Okay. So, okay, one of uh, livelihoods in rural area is farming, right? Which yeah. is uh, from agricultural sector. But why, even though they are producing, for instance, a rice in order to fulfill the country's basic needs, but they are still facing uh, poverty? That is my question. What caused this? So, saya langsung jawab ataupun macam mana? Langsung jawab. Okay. Langsung jawab. Okay. Okay. So, uh, berkenaan dengan agriculture sector. So, kalau kita tengoklah uh, untuk negara-negara, uh, contohnya mereka yang uh, miskin, kebanyakan uh, tinggal di rural areas. 
kan. Yeah. Jadi dan uh, mereka punya uh, pendapatan juga biasanya daripada uh, agriculture sector like farming. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, itu adalah uh, be, uh, apa yang, kebolehan yang mereka buat atau buat hmm. apa yang mereka boleh lakukan dengan kehidupan di sekeliling mereka. Berbanding hmm. mereka bekerja dalam sektor-sektor lah like, uh, manufacturing hmm. apa semua tu. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so that's why mereka lebih kepada agriculture sector disebabkan oleh environment mereka uh, hidup di hmm. kawasan tersebut. Hmm. Hmm. For me, in my opinion, uh, mungkin mereka harusnya lebih sejahtera, mem, karena kan mereka berperan penting untuk uh, yeah. kesejahteraan country kan. Tapi kenapa mereka yang lebih close dengan poverty itu gitu? Uh, let's say farming it's also a skill, right? We can't say that it is uh, they are unskilled person or etc. They are skilled person, but why they still are uh, facing uh, poverty? That is uh, my question. So disebabkan oleh uh, uh, kemahiran yang mereka ada lebih mengusus dalam uh, sektor agriculture berbanding dalam uh, hmm. sektor lain kerana mungkin dari segi pendidikan juga mereka kurang. Jadi mereka hanya ada skill dari segi uh, macam mana nak mengusahakan sesebuah farming apa hmm. semua. Uh, that's why lah uh, dia memberi kesan kepada mereka. Hmm. Kalau menurut saya harusnya uh, government atau kerajaan uh, lebih mengutamakan kesejahteraan mereka. Kalau misalnya mungkin bisa aja uh, mereka uh, let's say they want to go to school but uh, their passion oh I want to do farming like this. But uh, for some reason farming is also close to poverty so that is like a dilemma for me ma'am. So we can't uh, force anyone to go in formal school or formal education. It can be their choice also that they choose to be a farmer. So yeah, that is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, like a dilemma. I think uh, government should uh, have a look uh, with their needs. Yeah, that's why kerajaan perlu bantu mereka. Kerana mereka juga ada kebolehan. Kerana mm-hmm. sumber makanan kita juga kalau tak tiada mereka, kita yeah, tak ada. Betul. Ha, so <laughs> mereka pun penting. Mm-hmm. Cuma kita tengok kehidupan mereka tu mungkin kurang bantuan daripada government maybe mm-hmm. ya kan um, menyebabkan mm-hmm. mereka hidup mungkin bila berlakunya uh, bencana mereka tidak dapat mengusahakan dia punya uh, farming tersebut jadi okay. dia memberi kesan kepada kehidupan mereka lah uh, ma'am uh, one more question may I? okay yeah, sure okay. Okay. Uh, you mentioned about education sector but uh, I think you are more concerned about uh, formal education which is uh, about go to school Should the children go to school because skill it can be also get from school. Yes. It can be let's say uh, for instance athlete they don't need to go to school right. Yeah. So, so yeah. You can get the knowledge from the inform uh, informal education or so. Yeah. 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 Uh, so we can. But get... I think you your main concern about <laughs> formal yeah. education. Yeah. Tapi pendidikan mm. juga penting maybe from the formal and informal education. Okay. 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 Thank you, ma'am. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for asking me. Miss Novita, I'm done. Thank you. Okay, my sister. Okay, and the, the next question in already in a room chat from Mr. Muzakir. Yeah. Is it invisible from your set, doctor? Uh, tolong mic-nya Pak bisa dihidupkan. Uh, pertanyaannya apakah ada di room chat, Miss? Oh, di. Kalau mau di, saya ya. bacakan. Oke, okay, hmm. boleh. So daripada siapa? Nugu Zakir. From Zakir, oke. Okay. 
some country government suspend a lower share of their gross domestic product GDP on education, which make public education less available, particularly to the poor and of lower quality, the classroom, from desk, no computer, or a common site in school distribution project that one needs to the means, chamber out, or uh, maybe unqualified to teach certain subject, or is the government more serious in paying attention to these challenges? So in my opinion, they are like you say that uh, yeah, again kita tengok uh, certain country dia memperuntukkan uh, uh, apa perbelanjaan yang kurang dalam uh, education. Okay, uh, jadi dia menyebabkan uh, kalau kita tengok uh, dari segi uh, infrastructure dekat uh, sekolah itu uh, kurang lah. Okay, uh, bilik sarjah yang rosak ataupun uh, tiada komputer like you mentioned. Okay. Uh, and then uh, guru juga uh, kelebihan uh, mengajar subjek yang mungkin dia tidak family dengan subjek tersebut. Jadi uh, apa yang kerajaan perlu buat adalah uh, dengan uh, memberi uh, lebih banyak bantuan Okay. Uh, untuk uh, menambah baik infrastruktur di sebuah sekolah uh, untuk uh, dan juga uh, dia train uh, dia memberi uh, uh, training kepada uh, teacher ataupun dia mendapatkan guru-guru yang lebih uh, layak untuk mengajar uh, mereka ataupun mengajar pelajar-pelajar ni. Okay. Ini antara uh, bagaimana uh, kerajaan perlu uh, lakukan untuk uh, memastikan ataupun uh, bahawa isu ini dapat diatasi. Thank you for answering. And also we have a five question again from audience in the YouTube. Yeah, the first question, this is from Mr. Adi Nugroho. Uh, is there any relation between religion and at and ethnic with the prophecy of a country? Religion and? Oh, relation between, oh, I'm sorry, religion and ethnic. Ethnic. Yeah. So, relationship. Yes. Relationship between religion and ethnic. Yeah, I'm ready to chat in, uh, in a group also. <laughs> so, uh, Let me see. Uh, certain country, uh, dia dia ada perbezaan dari sini untuk mendapatkan education. Dia ada uh, dia ada yang unsur discrimination ataupun diskriminasi antara uh, region dan juga uh, ethnic. Ada dari segi ethnic yang uh, like I mentioned uh, berkaitan dengan kulit putih dan juga kulit gelap, right? black and white color. So, dia memberi kesan juga untuk dia mendapat akses uh, pendidikan uh, di sebuah tempat. Ya, terima kasih untuk jawabannya. And then, uh, this is question again from YouTube. This is from Febriana. Currently, Africa is a continent that has a problem in the field of poverty. Is there no a process from the, from the government to turn the country into a developed country? And also, what factor influence Africa so that is often experience poverty and hunger? <coughs> okay, uh, seperti yang saya cakapkan tadi, uh, kalau kita tengok sub-Sahara Afrika adalah negara yang tinggi dari segi abstract property, right? So, uh, apa yang... That's why the United Nations memperkenalkan SDG uh, to solve uh, the uh, the issue of uh, education ataupun untuk mencapai uh, quality education. Okay. Uh, okay. And then this is the last question from audience in the YouTube. The existence of poverty and hunger case he hike mortally. Can this affect the industrial world and income for the country? It can. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, apabila berlakunya uh, poverty and hunger, so indirectly it can affect the country in economy. So that's uh, kenapa dia dapat memberi kesan kepada negara tersebut sebenarnya negara tersebut terpaksa uh, memberi bantuan kepada mereka untuk meneruskan kehidupan. Mungkin dari segi uh, menyediakan tempat tinggal, dari segi uh, memberi mereka pendidikan. Okay. So dia memberi kesan kepada uh, ekonomi negara. Okay, we don't have no more question again from uh, audience in a YouTube and Zoom. Uh, for I before I closing this event, may I take a picture for documentation, doctor? Okay, sure. Yeah. Mbak Febri mungkin bisa dibantu untuk sesi fotonya. Ya yeah, boleh. Bagi peserta yang belum mengaktifkan kameranya bisa diaktifkan terlebih dahulu agar kita dapat foto bersama. Ya, bagi yang belum on cam, silahkan on cam terlebih dahulu. Oke, saya hitung dari satu, dua, tiga. Oke, sekali lagi. Satu, dua, tiga. Oke, terima kasih. Acara saya kembalikan kepada Kano Hita. Oke, yeah, thank you Miss Febri. Ya, yeah, thank you for all our participants to join in this class today until last session. Thank you for Dr. Nora Zela for sharing your presentation. It's a very material knowledge for us. And I hope we can meet again in other event in the future, Doctor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to this webinar. Okay, see you again. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, Miss. Bye. -bye. See you soon. Bye, Febri. So good to be here. Ya, mungkin para peserta yang mau meninggalkan acara bisa di